you know, more rain, more wind, guys. That's what we're going to expect for a while now because it's so slow moving. The last update from the Hurricane Center only still has it six miles per hour. Something interesting to watch here as we look at the satellite and radar imagery. It took this long. Barry's been with us for a while now, but it's finally starting to wrap the moisture all the way around the center here in the last couple of frames. Of course, the heaviest of that rain on the eastern side of it coming on shore and bringing heavy tropical downpours for a prolonged period of time. And look at the slow motion will continue here. It's not covering a lot of real estate in the coming 24 to 36 hours. Still in the state of Louisiana as we get into tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. So uh, over 15 hours from now, it's still in the state moving slowly before it gets picking up a little bit forward momentum as it lifts north and eventually decays into just a remnant low. It's been a while since a hurricane has impacted uh, Louisiana. 2017, we had Nate, but it's been an even longer time until we had a July landfalling hurricane. That was back in 2005, 14 years ago with Cindy, and that made landfall as a category one as well before quickly weakening to winds of 60 miles per hour as a tropical storm as it moved over land. Winds have been with us for quite a while now as we watched uh, Barry get its act together over the uh, Gulf of Mexico. The wind stayed up and it's a very large wind field. Those tropical storm force winds extend out 150 miles from the center. So one of the larger wind fields we've seen in quite a while. Some recent gusts here. You're looking at 46 miles per hour on Homa. Uh, sustained winds, though, in the white uh, numbering there, 32 miles per hour. A recent gust of 40 miles per hour in Hammond at 24. So we're going to continue with the wind as long as that storm is in our general area. As it slowly lifts away, the winds will die down. But we have a very large precipitation shield, too. So all of this rain coming in from the south and lifting pretty much due north up and over land over the low-lying areas. Switching it up here, still satellite imagery. This is visible. This is the cloud deck illuminated by the sun that's currently up. We can't use this at night. That's why we use the infrared and the water vapor to still give us an image. But you can certainly point out the uh, circulation here of Barry as it's slowly moving on land and will start to kind of lose its general structure as it's going to be away from its fuel source, which is the very warm Gulf of Mexico. Those temperatures there four degrees above average. They're in the mid to upper 80s, well above where we should be at this time of the year so far. There's radar loop over the last six hours. I put it that long because it, you can really see it filling on in here in the last couple of hours as the storm intensified right before landfall. The heaviest of those bands have continued to be well off to the east. Dolphin Island, Mobile, Alabama, just getting socked all morning. It's been like that for up to eight hours now, so they've been getting a lot of rain and flooding issues there, but seeing it really fill on in here when you're looking at the yellows and the oranges, those are the heavier rain downpours and there's a lot of it and it's kind of staying over the same areas and that's the problem. These are training thunderstorms or training showers, meaning they're moving over the same area, dropping a lot of rain. Here's a close up look at Gulfport. That rain has been increasing in intensity with the darker greens and now the yellows lifting up and over that Bay St. Louis, some lighter rain there, but it will pick up out towards uh, Sun, Covington, Folsom, Mandeville, some lighter showers for you now, but you've had your fair share of the downpours and in downtown New Orleans, widespread lighter to moderate rain showers with some heavier downpours in the mix, but look what's brewing to the south, lifting pretty much due north, and we have much more out towards Homa, and uh, all the yellows, dark greens there indicating the widespread heavy tropical downpours that we've been talking about. So the bigger picture here, there is the center depicted from the uh, 10 a.m. advisory from the Hurricane Center. We're still looking at the majority of the thunderstorm activity located to the south. The infrared imagery, which is what I'm showing you here, this is what we can use at night to still, still see the storm. This shows us the temperature of the clouds and why that actually matters is because the whites and the blacks and some purples in there indicate colder clouds, meaning the thunderstorms are higher, they're more mature, meaning a healthier storm. When we start to see these die on off and become yellows and some oranges there, meaning the thunderstorms are dying out a little bit. So still got some pl plenty of thunderstorm activity there. Switching it up to throw another filter, water vapor, and what this does shows us where the dry air is, where the moist air is. Dry air is not good for tropical systems, and we have that dry air off to the north. Earlier in the life cycle of Barry, it was really impeding its development, but now it's kind of retreated uh, back off to the north, which is why we just saw that most recent increase in intensity. So what I'm gonna show you here is the wind forecast. What's going on here? I talked about the very large windshield. Well, the yellow shading that extends out in some sectors, first of all, let me preface this by saying when we look at a hurricane or a tropical system, we divide it into four quadrants. Typically, you find the strongest winds in the northeast quadrant, 
but not always. And in this particular case with Barry, the strongest winds are located in the southeast quadrant, and that's where those tropical storm force winds extend out up to 150 miles. The orange here indicates winds of 59 to 73, so stronger than tropical storm force, but just below hurricane criteria. And notice this red little blob here. This is the hurricane force winds. Notice located on the eastern side and northeastern quadrant. That's where you could find those winds gusting up to 74. But it doesn't last because I put it in motion as it interacts with land. The wind field starts to shrink a little bit. We still hang on to the tropical storm force winds, but we lose the hurricane force and then it really starts to weaken as it moves over land. So let's talk about the wind speed in those quadrants. OK, we're looking at the coast here and the forward movement of the storm with this particular storm. It's moving to the northwest at six miles per hour. So why we get the strongest winds on the eastern side is typically the storms are moving much, much faster than six miles per hour. So you factor in that forward speed, right? So the storm is moving at six miles per hour. It has sustained winds at 75. You add in the speed of the storm, you're getting 80 mile per hour winds. On the other side of things, you're not factoring in that momentum. So you actually subtract that and you get some weaker winds. Still pretty strong there. So let's use a typical storm and say it's moving at 25 miles per hour. You'd get winds on this side uh, nearly of 100 miles per hour in the eastern side, northeast quadrant kind of thing. Hope that wasn't too science but it's just something interesting to kind of take into account there. Here's a look at the high res precision cast as we go through the next uh, several hours into tomorrow. We're still looking at those heavier downpours dropping inches of rain. We'll talk about when that wraps up in our next weather update coming up in a little bit. That should include the one o'clock advisory from the Hurricane Center as well.